Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a candlestick chart. Now a candlestick chart is a type of chart that's probably used most commonly nowadays for stock analysis and when people use it in uh, for technical analysis to chart out the trends for stocks. Uh, this particular type of chart actually has some history dating back to the mid 1800s and was uh, supposedly created by a rice trader in Japan. Now there are a couple things that you need to consider when creating this type of uh, candlestick chart. You need to have four series of data. You need to have the open price, the high price, the low price, and the close price. And that's what creates uh, these type of this type of imagery, this uh, candlestick chart. Now let me go ahead and go through the mechanics of creating this type of chart. Make, make sure that we have our, our, our four series of data and our date. And it's fairly simple, but I think the um, value out after creating this chart is understanding uh, what it means. So let's go ahead and see how we create this chart first. And I'll describe uh, the different attributes of the candlestick chart. So let me go ahead and just delete this chart. And I have my data here. I got this from Google. And this is for the Google stock from uh, November and December of 2015. All I need to do is just click anywhere within this range of data. Excel will be pretty smart enough to figure out uh, where the boundaries are. Uh, I'll go under Insert go under the recommended charts because it doesn't really show up here the stock chart it just shows the the by the par, the column chart the bar chart etc so I have to go under the recommended charts and in the recommended charts we have insert chart window here and I'm gonna go into the all charts uh, tab now right there we have we have a stock chart and this will have a group of different stock charts the one I want is this open high low and close uh, it's not called a candlestick but it takes the different four attributes, the open, high, low, and close, and it basically charts out a candlestick chart. So once that's selected, I'll click OK. You see it's pretty small here. Let me go ahead and increase the size a little bit, and I change some attributes here. I don't need this legend here. I'll go ahead and select that, delete it, select the grid grid lines here, delete that. That just is just a little extra noise there. You can see that it's given me the dates and it's kind of put it in a diagonal format, and it's kind of skipped uh, every other date. So I'm going to go and change that. I'm going to select that, right click, go under format access and under the um, this is the access options I added open there. I'm gonna have just have it one day so the units I'm gonna make the major units one day go ahead and put one tab and you can see now it's kinda of selected that out there and I think that's probably all I need to do there go ahead and close that I'm gonna change the chart title and make that uh, just make it more explanatory Google this is the Google uh, chart and you can see now we have our dates here and we have our candlestick pattern. Now the thing to notice about the candlestick chart is you start to notice some patterns here. You, there are a white color and there's this black color so basically it's a hollow or it's filled. And you also notice that there's these lines that are above uh, the square or rectangle and below it, below the fill, fill part. So let's go ahead and highlight uh, one of them, or maybe two of them, and kind of describe what th these things mean. So basically with our candlestick chart we have our body and basically that's this uh, uh, square or rectangle piece there. Now the body represents the the range between the open price and the closed price. So when you have a, a, a longer body it kind of indicates that the open price and the closed price they're pretty spread out. Uh, maybe in, in this example we have uh, for December 4th if we go down here to December 4th we'll notice that, let me go and just highlight this so because we're, we're focusing on that. We'll notice that the, the spread between uh, the open price and the closed price is pretty high. It's over ten dollars basically so that's a pretty high spread and you would also notice the color is white it, or it's not filled and usually when that uh, when it's not filled it indicates that the closing price is higher than the opening price. Now if we go back a day before you see that there's a, a dark pattern here um, and that's filled and the fill body indicates that the closing price was less than the opening price. So if we go back here to December 3rd, let me go ahead and highlight this one a different color. Go ahead and highlight this one. Um, maybe I'll do this one orange. You'll notice that the opening price was 766, but the closing price was 752. It was lower uh, than the closing price was lower than the opening price. So if you start to see a trend of a lot of uh, filled, there's a lot of darkness, there's a lot of black, a lot of filled, that means that there's probably uh, selling pressure. So that's kind of giving you an indication that uh, the price, is, the trend looks like it's uh, the closing price is less than the opening price. If you see a lot of uh, uh, 
hollow bodies that would indicate to you that the closing price is higher than the uh, opening price. So another thing on the body is if we have a long body, what it would do is it kind of indicates that there's more buying and selling pressure. So there, there was a lot of activity uh, between uh, the upper realms of when the stock closed and the lower realms of when the stock opened. So that kind of indicates there's a lot of buying and selling activity. Now a short body, let's say for example, um, if we had a short body here, it indicates that there wasn't really that much uh, movement in the stock price from open and close. So I kind of, if you see uh, a, rain, a trend where there's a lot of short bodies, there's not really a lot of uh, activity on that stock. But if you see a, lot, a a trend where there's a long, a lot of long bodies. You can you see that there's a lot of activity on that stock, and that's probably good for day traders because they can go ahead and trade uh, from that wide disparity in the range. Now, outside of the body, we have these uh, lines that jut out from the body, and these are called uh, the shadow or the tail or the wick. Now, of course, if we keep in line with the candlestick analogy we we'll use the term wick but basically these are they have different terms tail or, or shadow or wick and what they do is they indicate a, the range of activity uh, from the body so for example we have December 3 we can see that uh, even though it is a black body which indicates to, to us that there was uh, the stock actually closed lower than the open uh, we can see that there's a lot of activity here uh, for this tail that indicates there was a lot of downward pressure there was a lot of selling pressure here uh, because it's pretty long so if we look at December 3rd here we can see that the stock went down as low as uh, 745 here so there was a lot of uh, downward pressure uh, on that date and if we were to look at another example here, maybe we'll look at December 2nd. There was a lot of uh, pressure. There was a lot of uh, difference in uh, the price here. Uh, let's see, December 2nd, where the high was uh, pretty high from for, for that for that date at 7.75. But unfortunately, uh, since we have a filled out candlestick, that indicates to us that the stock closed lower than the open on that day. So uh, there's a lot of analysis that goes through that you can use for a candlestick chart. And this is just kind of a brief introduction into the candlestick chart and kind of gives you an understanding of the shape and what it means. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, attributes for this type of chart. Very, very specific types of descriptions for uh, the different uh, shapes that it takes. For example, uh, this may be considered a spinning top. Uh, we have something called doji, dragon flying doji. Uh, th these are all very esoteric type of descriptions for the type of shape that the candlestick chart takes. And if you're very interested in, in doing that, you can probably do a Google search on candlestick charts and or find some books and it'll give you a great detailed description of what it means. So that was the basic overview of a candlestick chart. I hope it kind of gives you uh, a, basic, a basic understanding of how to create a candlestick chart and also what the shapes mean in the candlestick chart. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.